but yeah, but obviously, um, yeah, Joe, if you want to lead on with another question. Yeah, one, one of the things that I always find interesting is, you know, you, you talk about obviously the, the number kind of minutes and stuff you play in a season and that. When you're kind of playing like 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, I'm talking to some of the academy players coming into Chelsea. How difficult is it for you to pick up that tempo when you start playing first team football? So you might get a five minute run out against Man United, then you, you kind of, you know, six weeks later, you might get a 10 minutes here. Is it, is it difficult to kind of get that consistency that you're talking about? Or is it just something you, you just have to play at the drop of a hat and be expected to because you're a Chelsea player? Whether you're at Chelsea, whether you're... Yeah, any top club, yeah. Or any club, I suppose, yeah. Any? Yeah. Matter. It's tough coming in. Coming in as a, as a sub is is worse than starting the game because you don't pick up the pace of the game. Yeah. Uh, and I think the thing with Chelsea was is the fact that... Um, or any other club, or any top club, or wherever yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. When you come on, in that 10 minutes, if you can't impact the game, and obviously you're already slow off the pace, if you can't impact the game... Mm -hmm. That could be you for another six weeks. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult being a young player at Chelsea because there's so much quality. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's always the fact of having the belief of you can play in the team. I mean, when I was there, it was, it was me and three or four other young players. And we always had the belief just for us to stay with the pace of the game. We stayed back after some training sessions yeah. to do it just to keep our fitness up because we didn't know when we were going to get chucked in. Mm -hmm. And we, when we do get chucked in, we have to live up to the level, but also get to the pace of the game a lot quicker. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, always, it's always difficult coming off the bench anyway, but I think as a young player, coming off the bench in certain games is a lot harder than, than you think if you're not in the right condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right, because it's like, how often do you see players coming off, off from the bench having a big impact? Yeah, yeah, if you've got half an hour of a game, then yeah, obviously you've got more time to settle in, but you only got 10, like, token minutes. What, what can you really do other than just, like, do the basics and just make sure you don't piss the manager off? You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> In a positional sense, if you're playing up top, then you've got a chance. You, you might have one chance. Yeah. One call. That's... And okay, that's your chance, but say if you're coming on as a defender, your aim is not to mess up. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you're coming on as a midfielder, your aim is to just keep that ball. Yeah, exactly. So, like, but I've got to know. say though, like every time you came on, because this is always one thing I look at, like people that like express themselves when they try and play, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I've seen, let's say certain young players getting a chance and they play very conservative. They don't really play to their best abilities, which they can, in it, but Every yeah. time you came on, you could always see that like, you were trying to express yourself, like if it's a back heel, the link up play, like all that type of stuff. Like, I remember that assist, obviously, to Moses against Leicester. Moses, that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, again, it, I guess that is the mentality aspect too that that plays a lot and helps a lot too when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, you, you know, when you when you don't play games and you go around and you train every day, you train every day, you know, you're almost starved off it. Mm. Or, for me, I just thought I can't lose in this situation. You yeah. know? Mm -hmm. if, come on, I have—I I don't have nothing to lose because mm -hmm. hey, I train hard every single day. Mm -hmm. Every and the and the players who are playing, they're at the level that they are because we're giving them the toughest yeah. competition in training every week. Mm -hmm. So when when. Whenever I got chucked on, I just thought, yeah, I have nothing to lose. I might as well express myself. And yeah, and there's no, there was no point in hiding. But I think that comes down to experience as well. Don't forget, I've had about six loans anyway. So yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> so yeah. coming on and playing is something that I've done before, and I know how to prep myself for it. Yeah, for real. You know what? Before, basically, I just want to ask you another question, and I wanted to like talk about uh, sorry for a tiny bit, but um. But yeah, I've always been curious. This is like a personal one for me. But like, any time I look at football, I always see that there's a lot of like cliche topic points I always like put out there. You know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, you know, playing Premier League and youth level is just like a, a completely different standard. But then you'll see examples like, let's say Rashford's, you know, because I was doing some research into Rashford's. Um, you know, he was, uh, he didn't play as much for the under 21s. He was mostly playing for the under 18s. And uh, obviously, big fortune to come and play. 
literally slots straight in the United team and nothing happens. And then obviously amazing career since. Like in your personal opinion, do you think it's like a myth too? Or would you say like there is a big gap between obviously let's say Premier League football and like youth football? Uh, if I was to ask you a question, mm. just with what percentage of youngsters do you think could go straight from youth football into first team football and slot in like Rashford did? Yeah, because I was just thinking, yeah. yeah. I, 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 think, I do think we've had a couple. I think you could have played at 17, 18. I think Ruben could play at 18, 19. Yeah. But maybe that's because you, you had physique as well. But Josh McAcker looked okay when he played as a kid. Jeremy Borgo, you know, the sky man. We've had a, I think, I think yeah. we've had a few, but. I think even Hudson Odoi. I think he's got at least he's got uh, you know a lot of ability, a lot of technique, a lot of pace. You know he's he's got that ability to play on the wing. I think, but maybe that's just me being overly optimistic. But oh, I mean, I think I I agree with you in that sense. Um, it, it's a small percentage, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, very small. Yeah, it's not it's not for me to say really because I think a lot of youth players have got the ability and they do have the talent, but. Like most, like most players in certain situations, or most managers in certain certain situations, don't, they don't really have the trust in in, yeah. in yeah. what the players can do because we haven't really had the chance to show what we can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The Premier League games aren't <laughs> small games, you know. They're mm. <laughs> big, million pound games. Like yeah. we're talking there, so <laughs> you have to look at it from different angles. And I'm always. I, I never want to say, oh, the player, this, 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 or yeah. the, this, or the club, this. I always look at it from a different aspect of, well, mm. if this person's not going to play, there's a certain reason for it. And it might not be the reason that I'm thinking, but yeah. someone else is thinking it, or mm. another group of people are thinking it. Mm-hmm. Another group of people are thinking it. And it's never just one reason. So yeah. for me, for me, I think... If I was to give you my opinion, I think a lot of young players could yeah. break first team football and stay in there. Mm-hmm. Then, like I said, on a business point of view, don't forget. Yeah, play, yeah. But sixty million, they bought for thirty million. The wages all, in that, yeah. Plus wages. Mm-hmm. Gonna play the academy player that you bought for fifty grand from Luton. Yeah. And start him ahead of him. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, of course. I mean. Level. Just on a commercial level, it's, it's not right, but, mm-hmm. you know, going forward, there's so many different aspects. Yeah. Like I, said, I mean, a lot of players that you look at the likes of Chelsea, they win the youth league every year. They get to the UEFA Champions League final more or less every year. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of quality there. Mm-hmm. And the question is, that, you know, the question is this, it's always that value, isn't it? Yeah. To, yeah. First team. Yeah. How do you break that barrier? But how do you break that barrier and keep the name of Chelsea and keep yeah. the fans of Chelsea happy? Yeah, of course. I'm yeah. not going to be funny with you. It's, it's easy mm. us sitting down here and having this conversation now. Yeah. Saying, you know, I'm a fan and everything, but I'll tell you what, if we go out on the pitch and get mm-hmm. battered by mm-hmm. Swansea mm-hmm. the fans are going to be very quick to yeah so who wins <laughs> I know what you mean like when I was ans- answering the question too I was coming across like obviously you know I'm on social media a lot I feel like a lot of people always constantly underrate players or think they're not good enough which ain't the case because obviously how can he be playing at such a high level if you're not good enough you know what I mean and uh yeah obviously what you're saying is right obviously that different perspective obviously you know the pressure from fans the business side etc etc that gets forgotten about a lot too so 100% you're right I don't know I've always felt too obviously with clubs it should start from the top like the board you know they got to have a plan for the philosophy oh it's the philosophy exactly yeah. exactly so, and I think that's one thing Chelsea have the struggle with and so hopefully like now with that these new appointments that should be coming because yeah. don't get me wrong, the Chelsea fans always showed me a lot of love. Yeah, I, 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 I was there from ten, eleven, and and I, my dream is to always play for Chelsea. You know, so mm-hmm. it was when it was happening last year. I was like, 
it was surreal, you know, I was like, oh, oh two years ago, whatever yeah. it was, I was like, oh my God, like, this is actually happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, like, we were getting to certain games and, and maybe the results weren't going away and I, I went home upset that we actually haven't won that game, even yeah. though I didn't play. Yeah. Because, like, I, I want the team to do all and I want the club to do all because I've been, I was there, you know, going to games, I was ball boy at the, at yeah. the game. Mm -hmm. I was these Chelsea players and, you know, like, I think it's important to have that sort of identity as well because, you know, we had, we had JT at the club and he, he, uh, yeah. he had that, that identity of Chelsea Football Club and mm -hmm. this was something that whoever came to the club respected, mm -hmm. you know, so it was, it, it was, it was never an easy decision for me to leave, but it was, it was one that I had to, the right one. Yeah. Career, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I hundred percent agree.